Welcome right. in. Well, thank you. What have you got um, for us? What's been happening in the train world this week? Well, we've um, we've had some interesting new products arrive from ESU, mm. uh, which is a um, German what, company. What does ESU stand for? I honestly would not be able to tell you. I'm pretty sure it's a it's an acronym for something in German. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, for those who don't know, um, ESU is probably the premier manufacturer of um, DCC decoders for locomotives. Mm. So that's all the sound chips. Yes. DCC yeah. They sound. have they have a range called Lock Sound which is basically German for locomotive sound, and that's their range of sound encoders. Yep. Um, so we're in the process of um, procuring their stock a little bit at a time, um, and um, in the near future, we will be able to provide a service where we can install um, digital decoders with sound functionality and then install the sound files needed for a particular locomotive. Um, so say somebody could come in with like a, a specific requirement, they're like, I want sound for this, there's a catalog available from that manufacturer, um, you know, from that particular brand for sound files, and then we can we can put the right um, setup for the right locomotive for customers. So we're in the process of. So you'll be able to make my puff and Billy sound like a WRX. If I, Is if, that what you're if you want to, you if can you make a steam locomotive <laughs> sound like a diesel. Yeah. You can make a that hybrid. Would, that would blow my mind. So it's incredibly customizable, isn't it? It is. Yeah. yeah. And we will be looking at that in more detail once we have um, acquired all of the resources to demonstrate that, mm. which we'll do on a live um, yep. in the near future. But Next I just week. thought, Can probably I... not that soon. Come on. But, um, I'm putting the acid soon. on, mate. Within a month, I would say. That's a very good chance that we will um, we will have that up and going and really? ready, to, ready to show to people. All right. Um, but we did receive one thing that I thought would be really cool to show everybody. Mm. Um, what? Well, it's just this thing here. We might actually remove this locomotive out of it which i just put there to be safe this stuff is way too close to me mate you know that <laughs> <laughs> we but, trust you no, uh so this is a i don't trust me servicing cradle look at that from esu what do you mean servicing cradle so uh with um locomotives when you want to do repairs or when you want to install or remove a decoder quite often what you'll need to do is position it upside down um to access the screws because the screws are almost always at the bottom of the locomotive all of the service points usually are. And without having the appropriate tool, it's really, really hard to um, perform that work uh, without damaging the locomotive. So this this is basically like a soft, spongy foam material. Yep. Can um, we go on overhead? We can go on yeah, overhead. Yeah, let's do that. Let's have a that look. Would be great. I'd, people might be lost without it. That's OK. Well, I can I can sort of show, say, for example, this locomotive. I think this is a, um, I forgot the class this one was. That's a four class. It's not a four class. but. Five. Stanier <laughs> class, I think it is. Um, Bachman, and... Bachman locomotive, um, which is really, really nice. I remember this one had like the opening firebox door, which is What cool. do you mean? The firebox door opens. I'll see if I can do it again. Oh, we're going to have a close look at that. Hang on. Yeah. Let me the zoom, firebox zoom door. There you go. See, the fire door's open. Beautiful. Wow. That's so, how you get all the charcoal out. Well, yeah, all of the, um, that's what they would have had to have done. They what do you do with the charcoal after that? Had Put it on your bathroom. Somebody clean it out and. Put it on the razors, mate. But good for the raises. Because you have such nice detail on these, when you need to do something, we can zoom out a little bit, BJ. Oh, okay. But yep. you want to preserve that. You don't want to lose all those delicate bits, like what we just showed, you know, with that opening door. So you need something like this to put the locomotive into upside down. And that will keep you know, all those bits wow, safe. Wow, so, so it is. It's like a service station. So yeah. It's quite soft. Very soft material. Oh, I want to squish it. <laughs> That's like what you would call a driver's stand for RC cars, right? Except this is more um, a train stand. Well, that's right. So all the screws, all the access points for like removing the shell or doing mm -hmm. any kind of repair work, or again, like this, this is a DCC ready locomotive. So if we want to install a decoder, um, there will be some degree of disassembly required. I would think that it would be very difficult to perform that work without something like this. Uh, so this is um, a, they call it a premium work stand. Um, I'm not sure if that's the exact title. A foam service tray. A service and, um, tray. I'll just point out some of the features. I that think make it's this... actually good to have in store, like for when you're even trying to show yeah. people a loco. Like they're, they're quite a fiddly thing, and uh, I'm always dead scared to um, to drop them. Well, the, I guess the golden rule is you want to handle these things as, as minimally as possible, um, just to risk those details getting damaged or being taken oh. off, because they are getting more and more detailed over, over time as the manufacturing techniques keep getting more and more advanced 
Um, but I'll see if I can show. I'll take this out quickly. And I'll sort of show a profile view of exactly how this looks. It might not be so apparent overhead. Um, but this is sort of the side view. Um, so this would be our tray for having it upside down. So this would fit a double O or HO scale locomotive, which is what we... Uh, so did I do start. one for in scale? You could put an N scale or N gauge locomotive in there, but I think it's more specifically designed for this. It won't fit as snugly. And then you have one on an angle so that you can do um, servicing and inspection on the side of the locomotive. Hmm. So that's that's a really nice, thoughtful added addition as well. That's pretty... Um, um pretty luxurious compared to the one that we would normally use. We normally use a Pico one, don't we, which is quite small. Yeah, we can, well, I've, I've got one of those here, which oh, is okay. great. There's, there's, um, there's I, more of them. I do, I do love these servicing cradles. This is a Pico one, um, and I can open it up actually Please. and show you guys too. Looks safe enough to keep your eggs in. Keep your eggs in? A lot more, whoop, a lot more simple. You um, drive your eggs around your layout. Why not? I always find this, I, I model an N-Gage, and I use one of these. Anytime I do any servicing uh, work, I have one of these. Um, it's a lot smaller channel than the ESU one, so I don't really think a, an HO or double O scale locomotive fits as well. And then you have these inserts um, you know, that you can put in in various points to help lock things in place when you're working on it. You could put um, this one in there. Well, you, you could, could potentially, there you go. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's multi-purpose. Yeah. The, this foam is much much more um, premium feeling. Is it? Um, oh. But another another... There's a few design Swisher. details on this, which I really like. Um, I thought this was like a gimmick. This is actually magnetic. This is a magnetic strip. So when you've got screws and fixtures and things that you are take, you know, disassembling from your locomotive, this will keep it in place. That's a good idea. Are they all um, brass, though? Uh, not always. No, the, okay. you, get some, you get some steel screws as well. I was but, trying to find a steel screw to put on there, but I can't find any. And then you, you do have the ESU branding on there, which is nice. Um, so, it, look, it does look really nice. Even in oh, the look at that. There you go. Didn't even fall off. Didn't even fall off, even with a good shake. Oh, that's, look at that. That's not, sorry, that that's, you're dizzy. But <laughs> that's, that's not how you treat your leg. That's not it? going anywhere. But that's, I, I think that's a fantastic that's feature handy. to have. I mean, some I'll of those screws are tiny, aren't they? Like, They're minuscule. Um, and it might not be so easy to see underneath, but there's a, dove a dovetail join piece. I oh, don't tell me you can have um, them lined up to each other. You can. Oh, In fact, the box stop might it. demonstrate that even better. Stop it. So this shows you. Removing that dovetail piece. You're linking um, them up. And you low code guys are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey? Join it up. Make it really long. If I don't you, have the whole rolling stock and everything on there at once. If you had something like a big boy, like a big a H O Union Pacific big boy, like a big oh. HO scale locomotive. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> You'd need two of them. It wouldn't fit on one of these. So really? yeah. So that's a really nice, nice feature being able to do that. We like nice tools, don't we? We do. And nice tools are important when you're trying to do um well, if you take, quite intricate work and if you take pride in what you're doing and you know they do good good tools make your life a lot easier don't they they just make things more pleasurable so whether whether you um were interested in something like this unit from esu or the pico um servicing tray i think something like this is almost mandatory if you are planning on doing any kind of servicing work or I'd bring it to you. yourself or you could bring it to me i just bring it to you <laughs> that's why you're the train guru but yeah, this is, a, this is a new addition for us. We haven't seen these before. Um, and I'm actually really, I'm thoroughly impressed. I think these represent excellent value for money. Have you got one for my giant Percy? No, I don't have one that big, unfortunately. Sorry. You like your giant Percy, size. don't you? It's massive. <laughs> Comical Percy. Uh, but that's robust enough, but I don't really know if it you know, requires something you know, quite this delicate. But that's one thing we'll look at. Um, I'll grab, I'm going to. Go back to the regular view. I guess we'll yep. we'll look at another product. Yeah, what, sure. what, what is it? What is it? Oh, I'll, I'll put this aside if that's okay. Yeah, I'll put it aside for you. This is actually more of a restock. We have had this before, and I just want to announce that we have it available again. What is um, it? It is the. I can't see. Oh, that's okay. I thought you could see it on the screen. Ah, oh, that's. <laughs> it's a hoe. It is. It's a H, gauge. H O gauge or H O scale, um, C thirty eight class, express locomotive. Um, in New South Wales government railways colors, uh, I'll get one out of the box. That might be a little bit more, a little bit more exciting to look at. And oh, saves, look at it saves us doing an unboxing. Can I it does. Let's do some zoomy, Jay. Right? Yeah, let's do that. I think this deserves seeing some of those details up close. How fast does it look? Does, don't tell me the light works. You know, I don't think the light works on this model. Yeah, it's another thing to go yeah, wrong. I can't focus. 
That Focus, is, that's, BJ. That's, that looks that's great. It. Focus, is that BJ. Is that good? Looks excellent. Thank you. So this would have been like the the peak of the steam era, 1940s, 1950s, it probably even through the 60s. It's really quite a lovely design. Um, now, you, now you notice a lot of um, steam engines are black. Occasionally you find them in different colors too, but majority are black. Now why is it that they're mainly in black? I think it it would be covered with soot and crap, surely. Yeah, I think you, probably. Is that interesting? So it's a maintenance yeah. sort of um, aesthetic, easy to keep clean looking. I think it is. I think because the paint pigment is cheaper, getting like say they did they did actually and I'll talk about it a bit in a minute. They well, did actually it. release this loco in different colors. Yep. Um in fact this same locomotive will be available in the probably the more iconic green and gold paint scheme, which I think predates this. Yep. Um and then they painted it more austere colors. But cost cost and ease of, of keeping it clean and maintenance are probably the primary reasons. Well, it does have fast red stripes on it. It does. Yeah. Well, Makes the red, the red on the front, because I quite often have this red as well. So, is that for being able to spot oil leaks and things on the front? other of machines, like on the the pilot they call it? Yeah, I really think that was for safety reasons. Oh, I guess I can see it. I think they had to provide some sort of a visual signifier that yep. that's this is the front of the locomotive and the and the rear on yep. the on the tender. Yep. And this is sort of a, a common practice with locomotives in Britain as well. Oh, okay. They're almost universally red at the pilot ends. And yet you also you often had crew that would ride these steps that would be tasked with um coupling and uncoupling carriages and, and wagons yep um and because it was important that they had a good good visibility you know for where the steps were and where the pilot and all of these features were yeah that was that was a, a perfect factor one really interesting thing i noticed is these polling pockets so what, what? call them a polling pocket which bit's that what does that, that do? little round circle thing? little round in, in, indentation mm -hmm. right so many years ago, when they had very different standards for safe work practices, yeah. you could use that. They would have a pole that would slot into there. And if there was a track adjacent to this, they could use that. They put, they put a rod in there, and that could help move wagons or, or carriages on an adjacent track. And it would effectively push something on an angle. And as you could imagine, that's not really a very safe practice. Oh, so um, you're talking was, about what? Well, like a stick perpendicular and well, push it like this. Yeah, let's let's put it down like this, for example. Like, say so you have two things. You have uh, like a locomotive and a wagon. Yeah. On different tracks. Yeah. You could have a the pole for the polling pocket. Yeah. Go diagonally. Oh. From that from that um pocket to another pocket on a wagon or a carriage. Right. And then push it on a parallel track. But that was a pretty dangerous practice, and Why? they stopped. Well, because the pole wasn't really securely fixed in any way, so it could pop out. They would split or break, um, and then all sorts of OHNS problems uh, happen. So they I don't. Didn't I'm have not OHNS back then. No, that's what I mean, and that's why they could get away with using a practice like that for so long. Just bringing um, a substitute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they are, as I mentioned before, this locomotive will be available in the fourth quarter of this year. Well, it's um, not available now. No, it is, but <laughs> in the in the. Um, in a different the green and gold yep. scheme so it's the same paint scheme but just so you've got colors. time to collect them all is that what you're saying that is that's correct. it you can get yeah. this one now yeah this is um saving for the next series yeah well it's arm is the brand australian Railway modelers and it seems like every six months they have some variation of this locomotive whether it's the streamlined c38 like this one or the non-streamlined version which you've had in the past um and this uh coming up into the next six months we will see the um the version like this, mm -hmm. um, but in a different paint scheme. But this is a, a fairly new restock for us because they're yep. very popular, and mm. I thought it was good to let everybody know that they're available again. Very nice. I yeah. Love it. That is so cool. I always like looking at new stuff. Absolutely. Stuff, particularly the, uh, the servicing cradle. That was really. Well, it doesn't really get enough. Doesn't really get enough credit, I think. But as well, um, as you guys demonstrate, probably for somebody like you who's like always on the tools, yeah, and servicing them, I think it's a fantastic idea. But as as you guys yeah. demonstrate with um with the RCs, how you have setup stands and, and particular tools which make mm. your life and making setting up a car so much easier. Um, you know, the same rules apply in other right, areas. Well, just gives you just gives you less excuses to perform poorly. That that's exactly right, or to model poorly. If you've got the right, right tools that. Goes, you There's go a, a very way. good chance that my Leica would have bits missing. Really? Not, not if you had the um, premium phone service track. Not that's if right. I had the premium. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I love it.